Greetings game fans, and wouldn't you know it, it's time for another Super Start Select. This week at GameSpot Towers, we've mostly been enjoying the new Xbox dashboard with added voice commands. Okay, so uh, Xbox. <laughs> That's a good start. Xbox. It's really not... Xbox. And slaying monsters in our Minecraft server's nether dimension. Oh, there we go, there we go. All right, so once... Oh, oh God! <laughs> in this week's show, we'll be dropping news bombs in the shape of Dead Rising 3 rumors and the year's most played game, according to gaming service Raptor. And then Cameron's got one more Skyrim how-to, and it's frankly the only one that ever really mattered. How to get it on with a lizard man in Skyrim. Or even a human. Sure, I guess you could do that. And do stick around for a fine selection of comments with which we fulfill our remit for user engagement. 40% more interactive in 2011. Dead Rising 3 is set in California, specifically the fictional town of Los Perdidos, starring not Frank the photographer or Chuck the former motocross star, but new boy Rick the car mechanic. That's according to Silicon Era's unnamed source. To go with the rumours, there's even a bit of concept art that shows Rick in front of a horde of what we're going to go out on limb and assume are zombies. Rick's plan to escape Los Perdidos before a bomb goes off is to rebuild a plane. He's joined by Red, leader of a group of illegals who are infected folks not registered with the government, and Red's girlfriend, Annie. Among the psycho survivors, says the source, is a biker dude who rides a motorbike with a steamroller on the front. It's called a roller hog, so there you go. Predictions and wish lists for Dead Rising 3 in the comments below, if you'd be so kind. Gaming service Raptor has released its list of the most played games of 2011. And guess what's top of that list? Go on, guess. That's right, it's Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Everyone's favorite dragon shouting simulator is the most played game of Raptor's 10 million users, according to a mashup of stats that included total playtime in the first month, average playtime per person, and average session length. Skyrim also gets, of course, the title of most played RPG of 2011. Meanwhile, Modern Warfare 3, the little game that could, is Raptor's most played shooter of the year, and L.A. Noire is the most popular game that is not a sequel. And it turns out Modern Warfare 3 players would rather shoot each other's faces off than save the world. Fewer than 50% of players have finished the story campaign. Speaking of Skyrim, how about some Skyrim? If you've been playing as much as Seb, maybe you've also hunted dragonkind to extinction, striding mightily around in armour fashioned from their bones, and being a big shot. I'm very talented. But maybe in all your questing you never made time for love. Oh. If there's a hole in your heart that can only be filled by wedding an orc and buddy we've been there, it's time to saddle up the matrimony pony with this, Cameron's Guide to Getting Hitched in Skyrim. Hi, so uh, my name's Bob and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking for love. Uh, my interests, uh, well, I like dragon slaying, uh, bandit slaying, vegetable slaying, any kind of slaying, really. My qualities, well, I, I like to think I, I keep myself in reasonable shape. Um, I'm great with animals and I do enjoy a bit of a challenge. Uh, I'm a great hunter, but uh, but it's, it's not all macho stuff. I do have a sensitive side as well. But you know, I'm pretty accommodating overall. I'm not opposed to changing myself. Uh, bad habits, I guess I have a tendency to get angry. And I suppose I do raise my voice from time to time. Uh, so that that's me, and I'm I'm looking for a partner, someone someone to embark on the biggest quest of them all, really, the uh, the wildlife of wedlock. Right. Well, while that was certainly heartwarming, if you're looking to find love in Skyrim, that's not how to do it. What you need is five lessons in love, Skyrim style.
If you're anything like us, then your character is, uh, no oil painting. But hey, don't despair because the first rule about love in Skyrim is that it's got nothing to do with looks, which is lucky for us. Everyone can be irresistible, regardless of scars, war paint, or my god, what the hell is it with his eye? Anyway, all anyone needs is something to break the ice, figuratively. And we all know nothing breaks the ice like expensive jewellery. Again, figuratively. The pendant for the job is the Amulet of Mara. Mara is one of the Nine Divines and Goddess of Love. Hanging her necklace around your neck signals to the world that you are available and looking for love. You're likely to find one while questing through the lands of Skyrim. For example, we found one on the corpse of an Imperial soldier we definitely didn't bludgeon to death with our own fists. In order for your amulet to, well, work, however, you need to head to the B and Bar Tavern in Riften and have a chat with this guy, Maramal, and explain to him that you are in the mood for marriage. He will also sell you an amulet for 200 gold if you haven't come across one on your travels. Now, not everyone in Skyrim is looking to settle down. The province possesses roughly 50 eligible bachelors slash bachelorettes to marry. Also lizard folk, if you're into that sort of thing. While that may sound like a lot of potential brides, grooms and uh, pets, it can be tricky to figure out who they are among the hundreds of NPCs. Fortunately, the folks at the Elder Scrolls Wiki have compiled a comprehensive, albeit rather spoilerific, list. Check out the link below for more info. So, to help you out, but without spilling any of the story, we've found five prospective partners for you to consider, all of whom you're likely to encounter in your first five to ten hours of the game. A bride at a price, Janessa is found a drunken huntsman in Whiterun. To win her love, simply hire her as a companion in arms for 500 gold. She's a great option if you have coin to spare and enjoy placing your dearly beloved in mortal danger. To carry Benor's favour, you need to prove to him that you are both a lover and a fighter. Find him in Marthal and proceed to challenge him to a brawl. Punch him enough times square in the face and he'll be yours forever. Ayella is quite a catch. Strong, youthful, deadly with a bow. However, to win her heart, you'll have to put the hours in. Nothing but completing the companion story arc will persuade her that you are marriage material. The perfect choice if you love Nordic ladies but hate bears. Owner of the Woodmill and Iverstad, she will happily wed you, providing you present her with a gift of 10 bear pelts. Hey, don't complain, she could have asked for diamonds or grand soul gems or something. If you're looking for a hassle free option which requires no questing, money, or fist fights, why not ask Octave San of Solitude for his hand? Sure, he's an elderly gambling drunkard, but hey, if you like mustaches, forget about it. While all of these potential spouses are a catch to be sure, our personal favourite is Gorbash the Iron Hand. Just look at him. In Skyrim, life is tough and finding love tougher. There is little time for messing around when you live in such a harsh and barren environment, so when it comes to courtship, these people really wear their heart on their sleeve. And so must you. So say it straight and say it true, and they should respond to you. You're strong, clever. I'd be proud to face the challenges of life with you, if you feel the same way. And mine is yours. Before you can marry your true love in the sight of gods and men, you first need to head to the temple in Riften and chat once again to Maramal to make the necessary arrangements. Your wedding will be held tomorrow, from dawn until dusk. That's right, 12-hour weddings are all the rage in Skyrim, apparently, and work in a kind of show-up-when-you-like basis. When you show, you're required to present yourself at the altar. It is, however, optional whether you come to your wedding with an ice spike stuck to your arse. Our character did, for some reason. Should you choke and decide to wuss out like the giant committophobe you are, then there is one last chance to back out. But if your future partner is as dashing as Gorbash, well, you'd be downright crazy. Once wed, it's time to plan your future. First off, where to live. Well, if you're a homeless wanderer marrying purely for the property inheritance, then you can move in with your spouse. A home for the two of us. I'll meet you there. If, on the other hand, you become a bit of a property tycoon yourself, you can have your new husband or wife move in with you. 
Besides the companionship and the roof over your head, marriage boasts other benefits. If you ask your new spouse nicely, they can cook a meal for you once a day that increases the regeneration of magicka health and stamina. And if you sleep in the house with your spouse, you'll get a temporary bonus called Lover's Comfort that boosts your rate of skill learning by 15% for 8 hours. Just like real life. So that's your five lessons in love in Skyrim. Go forth and find yourself a lover. Except Gorbash. Leave him alone. He's ours. Fwah. Oh my god, you guys, it's time for feedback. You watch the show, you write the comments, we read the comments, and within the bounds of local obscenity law, we share them on the show. The first piece to make it through the rubber glove screening process comes from user TommyT456 on the subject of a new South Park role-playing game. South Park RPG, yes, could be awful, but I can't help picturing a similarly structured game to Costume Quest, and that was actually quite a fun little romp. Throw in the adult humour of South Park and flesh it out a bit, and it could surprise us. Well, that's the kind of blithe optimism we like to see, and you're not alone in your thinking there, Tommy. GameSpot user MoonlightWolf01 has this to add. Obsidian developing South Park RPG is great news. They have exactly the right sense of humour to do the thing justice. Can't wait. Let's hope you're right. After all, there was that other South Park game on the N64. Remember that one? Nope. User Thribs does. South Park Friend 64 was awesome. Yellow Snowballs was the best weapon ever. Everyone knows the gravity gun was the best weapon ever. Am I right, people? Last week, we were all bundled into a dark room and interrogated on the first-person shooter genre. Is it overdone, they asked us. Is it time to hang up COD, they asked us. Where do you want to go for lunch, they asked us. Now it's Big Rust 51's turn to answer. FPSs aren't dead, just COD. I love Crisis 2, BF3, Halo Reach, but COD really is getting boring. It's one of the few games that make me yawn. Loved COD before, but not anymore. Meanwhile, user Criminalac thinks the problem runs deeper than just blaming the biggest bully on the school field, Call of Duty. No more military shooters for me until something is changed in genre, because it's all Rambo-style health, stupid story, quick-time events, brain-dead AI and tons of killing packed into four to six hours. But the ever-wise Captain Rex Kramer thinks it's the hapless gamer who's to blame. That's you. This is all your fault, see. The sad thing is we keep spending money on them, so why would publishers change something that sells? Personally, my favourite FPS this year has been Deus Ex Human Revolution. Yes, it has the basic FPS overview, but it also has enough tweaks to give it a uniqueness to most other games of the genre. Deus Ex is uh, an FPS? It is the way I play it. And that's all we wrote, folks. You've been a great audience. Tip the waitress, we'll be back next week. If there's a hole in your heart that can only be filled by wedding an orc, and buddy, we've been there, it's time to saddle up the matrimony pony. <laughs> Sorry. I laughed. The matrimony <laughs> I did it. All right. Nice. Oh, boy. <laughs> Amazing. I'm kind of shaking. Should I should be hungover more often. I might. <laughs> All right. I'm drunk now.